What do you burn the midnight oil for? Sharon Horn Elson here. Welcome to day 1176 of What's She Up To Now? She being Sharon Horn Elson, my name. Documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business over four decades, actually way closer to five decades in different businesses, different industries, and over a quarter century of that simultaneously in corporate America, working for actually some of the most amazing, coolest corporations on the planet. And I'm trying to think, I think every single one of those businesses are probably, I could be wrong, I'd have to check. I haven't really kept track to see if they're still in business today, but I think I think the majority of them are for sure, P&G still is, and, thing, and 3M. So a lot of the, the companies that work for Honeywell, all those are still in business today. The big ones, the littler ones, the, the family-owned ones, uh, changed, they've morphed and changed. One was sold off to, and was acquired by a much larger conglomerate. A lot of industries tend to, um, as industries mature, somebody comes along, the big guys, and they buy off all the little mom and pop or, or cottage industries, and they acquire businesses. That's the fastest way to grow. The fastest way to grow any business is to acquire existing businesses. But I'm thinking about burning the midnight oil today, primarily because I was burning the midnight oil last night. And burn the midnight oil, of course, is an expression from the 1600s, and it means to stay up late at night, work on something, continue working on something. Nowadays, we probably say 24 seven, but if we burn the midnight oil, what are the things that we have done or would continue to burn the midnight oil for? I will burn the midnight oil for my children, for my family, for my for my granddaughter, I was up with my granddaughter, for my kids. I will burn the midnight oil to help and support them. I will burn the midnight oil if something I'm interested in or curious about has got my attention. How many times have you or anyone you know stayed up all night studying, researching, reading about a topic that you're interested in? Heck, we did it in college in topics we weren't interested in just so we could get a grade that we wanted from a professor. We did it in high school, we did it in college, we did it in projects uh, to make sure that we got the thing done by the deadline, the exam or the project or the group project, whatever it was. And oftentimes that got pushed off and procrastinated on until the very last minute, so it meant we were staying up all night to do it. I also had a, a boss in, in corporate America that uh, would ask all of the us department heads, usually late in the afternoon, if we could do a quick what-if scenario that he could present to his boss the next morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, which meant in order, it was never, you know, a simple, easy, oh, well, what if we do this or what if we do that? It was, what if we do all these complicated things that will involve all of your departments interacting and working together to figure out the solutions, then determine what would it cost in time, money, energy, resources, everything, and have that on my desk by 8 a.m. so I can look at it before I go meet with my boss at 9. Well, we, we fell for that a lot. Most of us were in positions where we needed our job. We liked our job. We wanted to continue working there. So whenever these what-if scenarios came up, we would do them. Unfortunately, it left, even after I left that, that company, it left this bad taste in my mouth about, well, what if this? What if that? Now, what if is a great question to ask when it isn't up against a super tight, unrealistic crunch. And if any of the what-if scenarios that we had worked on had ever been implemented, I think all of us department heads would have been awesome and, and felt good about it and been perfectly okay with staying up all night to, to move the business ahead. But since none of them, zero, zip, nada, in five years, ever were implemented or came to fruition, it was one of those exercises in futility that just left kind of a bad taste in all of our mouths. Uh, so will you do it for work? If you own your own business, if you're building your own business, I will gonna tell you right now, no one in your business will work harder on your business than you will, nobody. And I remember building my Italian food business. I was in the Italian food manufacturing business for like 37 years. And part of my divorce was to um, shut down that business and move to do something different. And I remember thinking early on in the business, and realizing with this aha flash of, of like, wake up, of, it was like a, a, an ice bucket of cold water to the face, realizing that, hey, no one has ever, and I was working in corporate America when we first got involved in the business and started it, and I realized nobody was going to work on that business except me, and they certainly weren't going to work on it harder than I was. Now, the one exception, the one caveat to that is if you 
actually bring in partners that have an equity interest, they actually own a part of the business, then they will work as hard on it as you do because they have a vested interest in seeing that the company grows and expands and explodes and supersizes so that they get a bigger piece of the pie as well. One of the, the fastest ways to grow besides acquiring other businesses is to find the right people and make them equity partners in your business. Then everybody is working on your business as hard as you are. It's not just you. Some of the most successful business owners that I've ever met are people that actually have everyone in the organization has an equity position in the company. So as the company does better, everybody does better. Everybody gets bonuses and checks and, and compensated based on how the business is actually doing, not how well they do their little job in the business. And then everything becomes everybody's job, right? Not, And I'm not saying that we don't focus on what we're, we're there for and what we're good at, but it means if there's a quality issue, it's not just the person that made the quality challenges issues. It's everybody's job to focus on quality in what it is that they do. It's everybody's job to focus on and presenting the company in the best light to, to get more sales and to find more customers. It now becomes everybody's job to find more customers, to serve customers better from, and now, Quality and customer service are, are everybody's job in the job that they're doing in the organization so that they are providing the best customer service internally or externally for the company. And everybody then becomes uh, representatives and stewards of the company, making it grow, helping it grow, finding and being creative and finding ways that would benefit the company and help the company grow. So I'm becoming a huge proponent in shared equity ownership in companies going forward. Now, I would say one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my Italian food business was not having equity partners. I, I think that it would have been a very different experience had I stuffed my ego down and, and set it aside and brought on equity partners. And in the end, I looked at doing an equity arrangement and I ultimately said no because I didn't feel right about the person that I was looking at doing that with. Uh, and so it's just in mothballs right now. Mothballs, not a good place for a company, right? All right, that is, uh, and actually, burn the midnight oil was our idiom for supersize your business today. So that was a fun topic for me. It's really interesting how each of these these sayings that I don't, I may not have given two seconds of thought to in the past have a huge impact on my thinking and how I can apply them in my business and in my life right now. Uh, of the, I guess we've done well over 800 idioms. I'm not sure what the count is now, but over 800 idioms and proverbs. A couple of them have been repeated, but only a couple in 800 some. Uh, but it's fun to find and use, get open my mind and say, well, how might this apply to business? And there have been a couple, I'm gonna tell you, there's a couple that, there's only been a couple though in that almost, you know, 800 plus that I couldn't, I, I was like, okay, I got nothing. I can't find a way to tie this into my business. It's got nothing to do with what my business is or how I would want to run my business or any other business that I can think of. But I'm sure somebody could find a way to tie it into their business depending on what your business is. Uh, there's been a couple of those, but not very many. My challenge is to find a way to make it relevant to my business and my life. Our do one thing every day, 365 day challenge. Our challenge today was about, I already forgot it, uh, our natural abilities and um, that those, just like anything else, are something that requires us to study and prune, just like a plant. A plant grows and is beautiful. And, and I love this because most of our beautiful flowers, the flowers that we find so and hold so dear, actually come from weeds or were weeds at one time. And I like to think about our abilities in that same way in that we're all born even though we don't realize it we're not all born major musicians or genius mathematicians or artists but within us all there are natural abilities and it's up to us to develop those or let them just kind of shrivel up and die within us and you know I remember as a kid wishing that I knew and I wish wishing that I had some awesome talent that was just like in my face so I didn't have to go searching for it. And I still, to this day, am always looking for, okay, well, what is my special talent? What am I here for? What am I here to provide to other people and how am I here to serve? Because I don't have, I'm not a great musician. I'm definitely not a great athlete. I'm not 
uh, artistically super talented. I mean, I can do a little thing artistically, a few things, but as my vision decreases, less and less opportunity to do that. So I always wish, I remember being as a kid and, and thinking about the kids that knew they loved gymnastics and wanted to do gymnastics or were really good and talented at a sport and just could do that sport. And believe me, I tried a bunch of different sports when I was young and I was as klutzy at one as I was the other. Uh, so some of us have to search harder for our gift and then once we find it, once we find our talent and the things we love, we have to spend some time and energy developing that. Uh, there's nothing sadder than a natural athlete that just lets that incredible ability go by the wayside and never uses it for themselves to improve their life or to improve the lives of other people. And, I, and I'm not just talking sports people, I'm talking any talent or ability that we have. We all, none of us die thinking, I did enough. We all wish we would have done or become or been more of, of whatever it is that we're here to be. We would have loved more if we would have uh, helped more people, if we would have created more, whatever it is that we're interested in. We never die thinking that we've done too much. Nobody dies thinking that they did too much. We all die thinking, and why do I talk about this? Well, because I did. At 50, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and died. So um, I wasn't thinking at, well, I guess I just went into a drop dead. So I wasn't thinking about anything. But as I woke up and, and started to unravel the experience, I recall nothing came to mind about, I wish I had worked harder. I, I did too much. I did too much work. Well, I did too much work, but it wasn't in the direction of creating what it is that I was capable of. And so uh, I think this is really important to remember that, that we all have natural abilities and we need to nurture and grow and feed and prune those and focus in on what it is that we really love to do. And uh, when we do that, everything else falls into place. Number one, all the areas and aspects of our life fall into place when we're taking care of ourselves, when we're working and moving toward and making progress for what it is that we want. So that was our centering challenge today. Obviously, given it a lot of thought about already about how I can do a better job of using that. Because I don't want to die and think, wow, I, I didn't do squat the last 60, 70, 80, 90 years or whatever, and I didn't make a difference. That's That to me would be sad. Sad for me. Maybe not anybody else, but it would be sad for me. So I'm going to work on it. Uh, so Oh, get up and go challenge today was the P in the soul framework with respect to relationships. And I was doing the relationships with my sisters. I have three amazing sisters and I have an AFS sister in Canada from the Philippines. Uh, and, you know, I, my relationship with my sisters has changed over the decades as we've all gone off and raised our families and raised our kids. It seems like, like everybody else when you get married. Some families stay really tight and, and close-knit. Ours has been close, but pretty far right if that makes sense we're we're geometrically close three of three of the four of us are you know within five miles of each other now it wasn't that way I used to live a little further away but I moved closer to them and uh, but our relationship is still in certain ways you know we were super duper close as kids even though we fought like cats and dogs you know Arr! you know <laughs> I can say anything about my sister but don't you dare say anything about my sister uh, or sisters none you know Greatest defenders, but also would fight and butt heads because we're all different, but a lot alike as well. Uh, and I want, I, I miss that. I miss them being my best friends. So I'm, I'm wanting to not go back to the way we were when we were kids, but to, to rebuild and, and to have the relationships mature and, and grow and go in the direction that we want them to go. All right. That is really all I've got to I've got a ton of things to get ready for this week and a ton of things to do. Uh, again, getting ready to travel the first couple of weeks of May, actually the better part of May, um, starting at the end of this month. So I realized today, oops, it's the 18th already. I better start actually thinking about my trip. I haven't even given it two seconds of thought. The most thought I've given it is when I've mentioned it on this particular segment. Otherwise, I need to actually start planning a little bit because I am a little bit of a planner. Less let go of more things and, and less controlled than I was when I was younger, but I'm, I'm still... I still require some a modicum of planning to make my life work. All right, have an awesome day. Any questions, anything I can help you with, please ask in the comments below or direct message me. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow just sharing what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Have an awesome day. I might take a nap. <laughs>